Hello, Nomads Cult, and this video is about the UV map, and it's more about the settings about the UV map and where to find everything. Okay, so okay, I start with um, point one. UV maps can be viewed using the inspector button. So you find the inspector button at the bottom menu here. Um, and here in the interface settings, you find here the shortcut uh, for the inspector, this one here. So when you press on the inspector button, the UV map is shown in the background. So and here you see the yellow lines, these are the seams of the UV map. And when you swipe swipe up or long press here, there's a submenu and you can yeah, set here different things, uh, what you want to see when you press the inspector. Okay, so I make my sphere visible. So this is the checkerboard you see here on the object for the UV map. Okay. So. The next thing here is point two. Primitive objects like a sphere, cube, or the tube, and so on, have a default UV map. Okay, so. When you press here the add button, you see here a checkbox for the UVs. So when this checkbox here is active and you add um, maybe um, a cylinder, so this cylinder becomes uh, or gets a default UV map. So when you press the inspector button, you see here the UV map for the cylinder. And it changes if you deselect, for example, the caps. So you see there's a different um, UV map. Okay, so. And this works for all primitives. So also for cone and so on. And this is an absolute nice UV map. Um, with uh, no islands or not, nah, no islands is wrong, but um, yeah, it's a straight UV map. I don't know other words for it. So, okay, then, so we need an example. I add here without a UV map, a quad sphere. So when you press the inspector button, you only see the checkerboard, but no UV map in the background. So I press validate. And then here in the topology menu, you find here the MISC submenu. And here you find the options to unwrap UV maps. So UV Atlas and BFF. And here's also um, a settings button for um, yeah, the UV unwrap settings for this. So face groups, stretch, island spacing and so on. And here also uh, settings here for face groups. Okay, here is the unwrap. And here you can read here, here this yellow sentence here, though, can be very slow target smaller than 100,000 vertices. So this is unwrapping should be done below 100,000 vertices. So polygon, sorry, this was, I think it's wrong. Okay, so and this quad sphere has 6,000 and it's okay. So let's press unwrap. 
and now you see here the UV map for this sphere. Okay. Or the PFF UV map looks different. So like this. So okay, this was uh, the poly count. Then okay. Sorry, I need the inspector. So here, this uh, sphere has a UV map, and the next point is a voxel remesh or dynamic topology removes or deletes the UV map. So I turn on the inspector and now I'm using the voxel remesher, so like this, and I press remesh, then you see the UV map is gone. So voxel remesh deletes the UV map. The same here when I'm using the clay tool and I activate dynamic topology here. So you see UV map is deleted. So voxel remesh or dynamic topology removes the UV map. Point five, so no direct seam marking function available. So but you can use um, yeah there's no function to mark seams so um, like here for the quadri measure it's possible to to paint here um, sorry so mark seams like this here and this is not possible so you have to use here the face groups here face group tool and so I'm using the dot and I'm painting here face groups they are a little bit smaller. So mist menu and here you see here the checkbox for the face group. So you can test it here with a stretching and yeah, see what happens. So when you press unwrap, well, let's wait a little bit. You see here the eye lens of the face groups <coughs> and so let's undo it and here for the BFF there's also the checkbox active um, so unwrap I hope it, it doesn't crash so but you get stretching uh, so it's not perfect Okay. So these are face groups. You can define UV islands. So the next thing is baked UV maps are saved in the TMP folder on the device. So, okay. So I reset the face groups. And I'm using the paint tool. So I'm painting on this object. And now I unwrap the UV map. And now I'm baking. So here are the baking features bake texture here you find um, the settings what you want to bake so I want to bake only the color and 
from itself at the moment, a 1K texture. So I bake this. And now here in the material menu, you find here your texture and in the color slot, here is the texture. So, okay. And on your device, so you find here Here is a Nomad folder and here you see um, a folder called TMP session. So, and here you find your textures. So here is a, um, oh, sorry. Let me go back. So here's your texture in this TMP folder here, textures folder and TMP session. Or it's possible to export maybe via OBJ or GLTF works also, I think. So here OBJ export so, and here you find the settings for textures. So, and yeah, I export, save to files, and save. So here, and here you get your texture. Okay. And so you can check here the export options here. Uh, you see here GLTF, there's also textures and here is always such a question mark. Yeah. I think USD also exports uh, the textured thing, but yeah. So, okay, joining objects merges UV maps. Okay. Yeah, how to test it? So, we have here a UV map and let's bring in another object, uh, da, 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 da. yes, so let's bring in a box validate. So where's my gizmo? Okay, let's check here the um, UV map for the box. And this is the UV map for the sphere. So you see here different UV maps. So when you select now both UV maps and this one here is highlighted. So here you see here this one is highlighted and I press join. You see here, you get now two overlapping UV maps. So from the box and the, the sphere. So this can cause problems, but it can also be useful. So be careful when you use the join thing with UV maps, um, check the overlappings and so on. So you see here, you get also here a texture here on the on the box because of the overlapping UV maps. Okay. So for three D printing, use primitives with default UV. It's I think it's better. Um, so an example is so I delete this here. 
and I add a, a cylinder. So I validate the cylinder and so and I check the UV map. So you see here a nice UV map and yeah. So I go a step back and delete the caps. So I need this UV map here and for the for the stretching here I'm changing here the divisions a little bit so that I get yeah, squares. So now it's a nice grid here. So I validate this. And then I put a texture on it. So I change the, the scaling. You see here the pattern is nice applied around the cylinder and yeah, it's okay. So now I unwrap the UV map again. So here I press unwrap and let's see what happens. So this is okay, but um, let's do a few other things. So maybe I deform this object a little bit and I close the holes. So now I press unwrap again. So now I get this UV map here for the cylinder. And now I put the texture again on this object. And you see the the problems here. So the seams and the overlapping or the seams are not correct and it's not a nice UV map. So you have to better use the default UV. So no remesh, no dynamic topology. So yeah, it's better. I hope you understand. So and the last thing here is sorry I turn turn it off here. So this is the last point here. Normalize UV map. So there's a, a option to normalize the UV map. So here in the debug settings here you find here uh, option to normalize the UVs. So here, oops, Normad will normalize the UVs inside the zero one tile. So when you press normalize, it's yeah, it normalizes the UV map. Um, so that's uh, that's it about this video here about the um, the settings for the UV and and all those things and yeah I hope it helps a little bit to understand this thing and for baking UVs uh, and how to do it um, there are extra tutorials so that's it have fun with sculpting and ciao